Here is a specialized stump jumper comp, 1988 vintage, which at the time was one of the finest mountain bikes money could buy. At 600 pound, it was made of steel at 26 inch wheels, cantilever brakes, Shimano XT components. And together we went on some great, great adventures. 30 years later, the specialized S-Works Levo, 29 inch wheels, full carbon frame set, short stem, wide bars, dropper posts, and at a penny short of 10,000 pounds, it too is a mighty fine mountain bike. Now the question is, at eight or nine times the price in relative terms, what can this bike do that that bike cannot? Where can this bike go that that bike can't? And critically, how much faster is the Levo than the Stumpy? Now, before we go head to head with these two bikes, it's worth reminding ourselves what the mountain bike landscape was like back in the 1980s. Let's not forget that the Specialized Stump Jumper, well, that was the first production mountain bike in 1981. And what made it a mountain bike was such things as the custom geometry, the powerful brakes, the wide tires, and of course, that low gearing. But back then there was no uplift, there was no trail centers. World level competition was yet to be born. There were no full face helmets. There were very few carbon fiber bikes. There were no mobile phones, there was no internet warriors, and there were no post ride cappuccinos. Mountain biking was simply going into the hills, riding sheep tracks and fire roads. It was as simple as that. Now clearly compared to modern mountain bikes, this bike is very different. However, this steel frame feels really compliant and smooth, even on quite rough roads. And that's aided by those big chunky tires. So you can imagine back in the 1980s, this is quite different to the road bikes that had been riding right off road until that point. Time then to do our first head-to-head -head challenge, the 1988 bike versus the 2019 bike. But let's just understand here what mountain bikes were about back in the 1980s. There was no subcategories of mountain bike. It was simply a mountain bike full stop. There was no downhill, there was no cross country, there was no enduro, and there was certainly no four cross. Out in the hills, we pretty much rode in the same clothes with no helmet, and we all had the same attitude. And that was just about getting into the hills, riding sheep tracks and forest roads, just having a good adventure. So, how do these two bikes stack up on the first hill climb challenge? Oh boy. Wow, I really did think that these low gears were something else back in the 1980s, but oh my God, it's soon run out of steam here. But then again, I always did ride and push, ride and push. Ah, oh, wow. I mean, this is no different to what a lot of people do with modern mountain bikes anyway, right? As it turns out, the 27 tooth front gear and the 22 tooth rear are as low geared as they thought they were going to be. Oh, boy. Oh, crikey. Oh, wow. Oh, that was hard. But then again, it's hard even on a modern mountain bike. Oh, wow. It's just that combination of pedaling, pushing, and, uh, oh, boy. Quite a short climb, but let's go and see how the e-bike gets on. It's gonna be common sense, right? Now, when we talk mountain biking, many of us tend to associate with mountains, massive, fierce, steep. This, in comparison, is a slope, it's a bank, and it's the place where that 1988 bike really did struggle. I pushed up there, but then again, lots of modern mountain bikes would be pushed up slopes like this. And that's where the e-bike comes into. We can climb much, much more steeper terrain than this. Oh boy. Ah, 
I tell you what, there's still plenty of climbs in there. Even in turbo mode, that was still hard work. Even on an e-bike. Ah, crikey. I think it just goes to show actually that on an e-bike, let's not forget that you can still have a crazy workout and you can ride steeper hills on an e-bike not just compared to a bike from 30 years ago, but actually compared to a modern day mountain bike of 150 mil travels. Ah, the specialized stump jumper comp. You know, we had some great times together on the hills, but I keep asking myself is how much more improved are today's mountain bikes than they were 30 years ago? So let's start with some details of each of the bikes then. So here it is, it's a size 19. It's a fully rigid steel frame and it's got 26 inch wheels. Now look at the gearing on this bike. It's got a triple chain set up front and seven speed on the back, which means it's a 21 speed mountain bike. And it is a beautiful bike. It's got beautiful brake levers and cantilever rim brakes, 600 millimeter bars, 130 millimeter stem with foam grips. There's no index gears, simply thumb shift. The tires, they're 2.1, reasonably big, 26 inch wheels, but quick release wheels front and rear. It's worth noting this is the comp version. At the time, there's only one bike higher in the range and that was the team version. So how do these bikes can compare to today's bikes? Well, a top end stump jumper today is 8,000 pounds. But remember, there's been massive technological advancements since 1988 in things such as the geometry, the materials, and of course, suspension. Now, in today's money, this bike would be 1,200 pounds, but it's worth noting that you can actually get a stump jumper, a lower end stump jumper today for 1,700 pounds, but a even a lower end stump jumper today is much, much more bike than this bike. How much have mountain bikes changed in 30 years? I think the biggest difference is actually, look how much bigger physically this bike is compared to my bike of 1988. Obviously there's been lots of technological advances in that 30 years, no more so than in the dimensions and geometry of the frames. And also the fact that this bike now has 150 millimeters of travel front and rear. Elsewhere, there's lots of changes. The handlebars have gone up to 800 millimeters. The stem, that's come down to 50 millimeters. And not only does it have internal cable routing, but it also has an internal battery powering that e-bike motor, which kicks out 90 newton meters of torque. The wheels, they're now 29 inch. Uh, the brakes, they're now disc brakes with 200 millimeter rotors. And the gearing on this bike is a 42 cog on the back, which is the biggest, and a 32 up front. And let's not forget, of course, the fine detail on this bike. For example, the wider, grippier tires, the onboard computer display, and the toolkit hidden in the fork steerer tube. 88 Stumpy, down section. Three, two, one. There's no way, that's like 20 foot. No way am I doing that on this bike. Not in a million years. Specialized Levo, downhill section, count me in. No, three, two, one. Ooh, Do you know what? It's when you go downhill where the difference between these two bikes really comes into focus. This bike is simply in another league compared to my bike of 1988. But think about the fine detail here. It's got, it's got tacky tires, it's got bigger volume tires, it's got bigger wheels, it's got 29 inch wheels compared to the 26 
of my old 88 bike. And then it's got other things, the geometry details, the longer wheelbase, the wider bars, the shorter stem, these all add up to a faster ride. Plus, of course, that thing called suspension, 150 millimeters of really plush, progressive suspension, allows you to go through roots and rocks at a far different pace to my bike of 1988. But then again, the trails and the riding has changed massively in those 30 years, so it's no surprise really. Let's have a quick look at a geometry comparison of the two bikes. The 88 Stump Jumper then had a 66 degree head angle. Now that's comparable of a trail enduro bike of today. It had a 72 degree seat tube angle. Again, very similar of today's bikes. However, look at that wheelbase, 1060. That is super short. And the 300 mil bottom bracket, well, let's not forget that it's a rigid bike. Chainstay, 430 mil. And the bar to floor height. Now, excuse me for putting this in inches, but it's 38 inches from the outside of the bar to the floor. That is a very low front end. Let's compare this now to the Levo. Now, straight away, the Levo is much, much higher on the front, 43 inches of the bar to floor. But elsewhere, the numbers are quite similar. It too has a 66 degree head angle and a 75 degree suit tube angle, which is quite similar to the 72 on the stump jumper. But look at that wheelbase, 1,235 millimeters. That is a huge, huge margin more than the old 88 Specialized. The chainstay comes in at 455, so that's longer. And the bottom bracket, 348. But let's not forget, it's got 150 millimeters of travel. So the Levo then is a far bigger bike physically than the old 88 Stump Jumper, especially in the wheelbase terms, it's about this much longer. But there's one more measurement which I wanna show as a comparison, and that is reach. Now, I can't actually measure reach out here in the field, but I'll give you like a close uh, comparison, and that is by measuring from the bottom bracket to the outside of the handlebar. So as you can see, this bike is about that much. Now. I'm going to show you the difference on the Levo. I managed to get hold of a tape measure earlier and the reach measurement on the uh, stump jumper was 840 millimeters from the bottom bracket to the outside of the handlebar. However, on the Levo, it's actually 920 millimeters. So that means there's an 80 millimeter difference in the reach measurement from a 1988 size large to a 2019 size large. So, so when, you, when you take into account the longer chain stay, and the longer front center, this bike is far, far more stable off-road. So it's very clear then, when it comes to riding off-road, that both uphill and downhill, the Levo is in another league compared to my trusty old stump jumper of 1988. And I'll remember the reason I bought this bike is because one magazine said that compared to a similar Cannondale, the Stumpy was a better descender. And I'll remember that first downhill I did. It was in a dirty, wet old day in Mid Wales. It was a riverbed sort of gully bridle way. And I think it must have lit a spark in me because downhill was a sport that I did and loved for, and still do for over 20 years. And I think that's what's great about this bike. It is simply so capable in any situation. Actually, when I think about it, if you want to see a video of a modern day e-bike compared to a modern day downhill bike, there's a video which I've done here. Uh, don't forget you can like, uh, share and subscribe to EMBN. Uh, let us know your thoughts on this video on retro versus modern.